Now we're going to look at the MLA, inline citation approach. That is, when you're writing your research inside the sentence, you make a quote or a citation, you take someone's idea, how do you put that uh, citation in there? How do you reference that? The list of references, that is, everybody's name and all of the detailed information, that's another section. Right now we're just looking at the inline citation. So this is the stuff that goes inside the parentheses usually, or that's the way we tend to think of it. Now, of course, the most obvious thing that you do is you quote someone's work. You take a direct quote. They say something, they wrote something, you copy it. You take it out of a paper, a book, a movie, or even a speech. That quote needs to be cited. And the way we do that in the MLA is quite different from the APA approach. So here we have an example of direct quoting. Here we have the quotation, which is open quote, close quote, and please pay attention, the comma is inside the quotation marks. Jones 152 wrote, no factor is more important, although not all researchers support this. So this is from a research paper by Jones. This quotation is from a specific location, so we need a page number. Thus, we have the page number 152. We do not include a P. We don't do that. We just have the page number inside there. We do not include a date, such as 2017. No, no date, no year. Here's another example. Perception is key to consumer satisfaction. And that's a quote from Smith. And here's a great little example. Now Smith is inside the parentheses. We have no comma, no symbols or signs or anything here, just one space. That's it. Very simple. And what is this? This is the page number. This quote is from that page. So the author is Smith and the page number is 135. Now those are quotes. What if you're going to be paraphrasing? That is, you're not exactly saying what they said. You're not copying exactly, but it's the idea. And we often do this in our research, don't we? We take the idea and we put that in there. Well, the idea is still going to need a citation. And here we can see this example where we have Jones, 152 has observed the importance of psychology through this social context. There is no quotation mark, so this is not a quotation. This is just an idea being borrowed from Jones. The author is Jones and the page is 152. Now, this is an idea and that idea can be found inside that paper about this page. Not a quote, but still you need the page number there to say it's about from that area inside the paper. This is quite different from the APA approach which usually just cite the whole paper. That whole paper is one idea. But in the MLA approach, you need to cite the page or the pages that it's on. This is where the idea comes from inside that paper or inside that book. Even if you're just giving a general idea, you still need to locate about where inside that paper or that source, about where is it coming from. Now, what if you are saying the whole paper is kind of the idea I'm citing. So in that case, you could say Jones, and then from page 152 to page 167. So all of those pages there, that general idea is coming from those pages. How about if it's the whole section or the whole part? For example, the whole part of a book. In that case, you would have for example, the importance of psychology to this social context is important, and the author is Jones, comma. And then we have, quote, quote, a little bit hard to see at the bottom of the screen there, society psychology. That is, this is a chapter in a book. And this chapter, because it's part of a, a larger entity, a larger unit, this is a small piece of something bigger. We use the quotation marks. And in this case, it's the chapter's name. That whole chapter is the idea I want to cover.